Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video series. Uh, in the previous video, we already discussed with Ajit who is with us here in the beautiful environment of rural university Bochum in Germany. He is actually a PhD in the Netherlands who got PhD after doing bachelor's and master's in India. He did his master's from IIT Bombay. If you want to know more about his past and also how he got the PhD, what how he applied for the PhD here in the Netherlands, then please check the previous video which will be flashing on the screen. In this video, we will discuss specifically about his experience of doing PhD in the Netherlands in Utrecht University in the field of uh, which field are you doing um, the PhD now? Solid state and MR. Okay, solid state and MR, mostly under chemical and chemistry, biology, chemical yeah. biology. Okay. So let's start with the first question. That we have for Ajit. Uh, so, how is your PhD program? Like, what's the duration and uh, is it funded or not? How is the PhD program? So, uh, in Netherlands, in general, PhD uh, is, uh, is like a job and all PhDs are treated as employee, not student. And uh, of course, it is like fully funded by university. And also, we got all benefits uh, like employee um, um, uh, as employee uh, in our PhD program. Okay, so basically, you get a salary. Yeah, and uh, its duration is for like four years. And sometimes it depends on your supervisor and your PhD work. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, like sometimes if you need some time or uh, like for two months and three months, that could be extended. Uh, otherwise, in general, it's four years of PhD. Yeah, yeah, that's true because I've also seen people giving getting time for like four and a half or five years, depending on if it is very worst case and you need really more time. Uh, one more thing in that is that like is your uh, so there are different types of phds funding so some people get the salary which is like only academic project some are both academic and industry what is your uh, case uh, so mine is uh, like from university so it's like academic but uh, i think i heard uh, some people also getting funding from industry mm -hmm. and so their phd program is like both in academic and industry uh, that depends okay yeah, but anyways, if you get a position and it's written that you get a salary, which is then, most of the yeah, cases, then... Yeah, then you then, don't need to yeah, worry, worry about yeah. your salary. Yeah, that's true. So moving to the salary, which you talked a lot and many people, you are curious about that. So roughly uh, every month, how much would you get in hand? What is the gross salary and mm -hmm. how much would you get in hand uh, per month in PhD? Uh, so, um, uh, if I remember correctly, the gross salary uh, in first year is um, around 2500 mm -hmm. but in hand you um, get only uh, 2000 something, okay. 20-ish, yes. Uh, and every year the salary increments is I think 8.1 okay. and along with that every year you get two times bonus mm -hmm. one is during um, summer week uh, summer time or during Ju june july and uh, another is in december mm -hmm. okay and how much uh, so after increment now you are in the third year now yeah because you started in 2019 yeah so how much would you get now in the third year in hand approximately so now i am in uh, third year and now i get uh, around 2800 um, in okay. my hand so yeah. one thing just to note is that uh, not everyone will get the same salary because the tax depends on your individual circumstance. In his case, he came from directly from India, so he's getting the 30% benefit. Yeah. So he gets a little bit more uh, in hand salary because I was getting, if you compare the gross and taxation, I was getting a bit less because I did not get the 30% ruling. So that really depends on person to person. So moving on, uh, as you started PhD almost in, in the mid of COVID. Mid of COVID, in, uh, yeah, after the first wave of yeah. corona <laughs> yeah yeah so do you get an extension or have you seen any of your friends who get extension because of covid because why i'm asking is this because i got like six months extension uh, my project was almost like in the middle two years very delayed because of covid some experiments so uh, what's your situation like 
so yeah i don't know uh, i think this covid extension depends uh, uh, varies uh, from universities to universities and what i heard um, from my university rule uh, generally uh, third year second year and third year students uh, and like obviously fourth year students um, who got um, uh, who suffered uh, because of covid Uh, because of co- co- because of lockdown mm-hmm. thing um got extension for 6 months but um, i think uh, uttarik university policy uh, uh, doesn't give uh, covid extension to first year students because they consider like first year student just join so they uh, more like, doing literature, more literature research work, not so they lab. really don't need extension okay yeah so mostly people uh, you know, in second year third year and fourth year got extension okay. but that also depends uh, on your supervisor mm. and uh, like phd students uh, because they decide if uh, they want extension or not okay yeah that makes sense um so going to the next question which is i think many people will be curious who work in a similar field like what's the topic of your phd mm-hmm. and maybe later you can also say like broadly which field of study in india could be could fit in this topic or around this topic yeah so uh, my master thesis uh, was about um, like uh, solution state in mr so in general uh, it's about biochemistry and uh, yeah it's like more about biochemistry thing so specifically the field focused on protein structure and dynamics but here i am doing solid uh so that's the same thing but um, the solution and solid has like a uh, totally different category so here i am working on some projects uh, on which i could study uh, using solid state nmr uh, so here i am mostly working on um, membrane proteins and um, cellular composition of fungal cell walls to know what's the composition and how could we um um discover anti fungal peptides to prevent from fungal disease okay and um, for membrane protein thing uh, projects um, we are studying mostly the structure and dynamics mm-hmm. how it's uh, uh, dynamic in its native state so broadly which field do you think will fit if you see indian fields who do research so, in yeah, similar yeah so in india also we have like solution state and solution uh, sol- solution and solid state nmr okay. so yeah people who are like working on this field mm-hmm. uh, they will know they will know definitely okay. yeah so it's uh, totally um, yeah like from different uh, structural biology uh, biology field mm-hmm. so in general life science people may not understand but who work on like structural yeah. biology thing they will definitely know okay that's good okay so how is the phd atmosphere like uh, what are the opportunities to network grow as a researcher attend conference summer school so what's your experience on this so uh, utrik university uh, like if i uh, see my group mm-hmm. we are more diverse and uh, it's like more uh, international as atmosphere mm-hmm. so and people in my group are also very kind and helpful so i don't feel um um problems uh, in working uh, so uh, it's more friendly and um, good atmosphere i would say okay and uh, university uh, arrangements phd night uh, phd dinner so where all phd uh, get oh, together and nice. um, get food free food like free dinner um, so is it like every week or every uh, month no, once it's or? like um, you know, once for two months so okay. like six times in year so there you um, interact with uh, other phd's um, and get to know also their work and like how their environment like 
because it's uh, always varies from different group to group. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, uh, here in general, um, PhD students can go to one to two international con con conference and uh, uh, university also organize a symposium like one or two day uh, small conference. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's like help to networking with people, with your field. And uh, do they like? I mean, most Dutch universities have that. So if you need to attend any international or national conference, you always get you have like a budget, and you always get funding, full funding for visa and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like for attending the conference abroad or. Yeah. So I mean, in uh, so in. If you have like conference in somewhere in Europe, you don't need a mm. visa application because you already have yeah, like yeah. Schengen visa. But yeah, of course, for travel and accommodation and for the conference fee, uh, everything is covered by university. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you have any summer schools in your field? Uh, so yeah, so we have like summer school uh, in my field and now I have one in upcoming like in June. Okay. So yeah, that's for one week and that's also fully funded by university. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so moving to more the realistic part like in terms of living as a single person, do you think the salary that you get is sufficient for uh, managing your living expenses can you briefly highlight like what is your cost to savings ratio like roughly how much you save uh, after the salary as a single yeah. person here so in netherland uh, house are like more expensive yeah, so yeah. that depends like when you leave and because that will completely um, decide your savings. Mm -hmm. That is a major expense. Uh, ma major expensive and nowadays uh, like there is house crisis also and finding house in cheap prices is very challenging. Mm. So uh, I mean in general uh, for PhD what you got or uh, like a salary is more than sufficient okay. for living uh, in Netherlands. And um, so I mean for my experience now I am in my third year and now I could save around um, maybe 800 to 1000 per month. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so moving to like more towards the end of the video, like summarizing your PhD, what do you think that you like and dislike the most in about doing a PhD here in the Netherlands? So yeah, so the most uh, good thing is um, international environment and friendly environment uh, where you can work um, very uh, comfortable. Um, and um, I mean, yeah, to compare to India, uh, the PhD in Netherlands is four years. That's the, mm -hmm. the so big, less, like yeah, less the time. next time, yeah. And also, you get so much in terms of uh, salary, opportunity and opportunity, monetary. Yeah, yeah, everything is salary, good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and um, any dislike? I mean, dislike. Uh, yeah, like if I say uh, this dislike is more about um, staying uh, uh, alone here because you need to take care of everything this cooking cleaning apartment Buying so grocery. that's yeah that, that that's the like negative point otherwise but yeah but that thing you will learn like how to manage your um so maybe you, that means like you get married and then come to do a phd <laughs> Yeah, and uh, any other dislike? Any other? Um, no, like I don't have like any um, negative points uh, so far. So. And what about the weather? I mean, the weather in Netherlands is always rainy, uh, so and uh, coldy. So. But you get used to it, right? Yeah, it's. But still, like, it's uh, yeah, less I mean, sun. Yeah, the weather is not good, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's always raining, so. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that could be one negative point in Netherlands. <laughs> so this was more like a general overview of the like and dislike about the PhD. Uh, do you have anything specific, like any major challenges that you had during your PhD? Maybe anything related to the PhD program, or the way it is structured or anything that comes to your mind which you face till now in terms of major challenges during your PhD? 
So, I mean, um, major challenges uh, because I came here during COVID time after fast wave. Mm -hmm. So, there was many restrictions when I started walking here. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't start my walk, um, uh, I think, for three to four months after my arrival because oh, there was okay. strict COVID rules and uh, because I was new here, so I couldn't um, work alone mm -hmm. and uh, so that was the challenging that time and uh, PhD is a challenge I mean right so mm -hmm. that depends on project how it works so I mean in general it's good uh, I don't have like uh, specifically some challenges so far but uh, yeah, first, uh, during my first three, four months was really tough for me uh, because uh, there were so many restrictions and um, uh, like I couldn't even talk to people because... Um, so you are locked down locked, or maybe yeah. people don't come to the campus. Campus, yeah, exactly. Restrictions. Restrictions, yeah. And uh, I forgot to ask one thing like, uh, how is the supervision? Like, do you have like weekly meetings or bi-weekly meetings? How is in your lab? So in my group, we have weekly meeting in every Tuesday uh, to discuss your uh, progress. Mm -hmm. And after that also, we uh, like have like personal supervision. Uh, I mean, we generally talk our project, how it um, progress or if you have some problem with your projects. So we directly go to supervision and discuss about it. But in general, we have weekly meeting once um, with supervisor. Mm -hmm. And the whole group, uh, we have also another one, uh, Wednesday. Uh, so, every one PhD uh, student present their uh, research work and progress uh, to whole group. So, in general, uh, twice for week. That's nice. Like, you also get peer feedback and also feedback yeah, from your exactly. supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, final question, like, any advice or tips that you want to give for future aspirants who want to come to Netherlands to do a PhD? So, I mean, my experience so far is good. So, if anyone want to do PhD somewhere in Europe, then Netherlands is one of the best options. Mm -hmm. So, just go through uh, your own fields. Uh, just go through um, professor's web page or university site if they have open position for your field then uh, reply to invert uh, reply uh, sorry uh, mail to professor or um, um, process your application through university you definitely get quickly reply from uh, professors or university because they respond so quick okay. uh, like f from my experience at mm. least and uh, the process also here is very smooth so you don't need to do a uh, like a um, lot of processing, um, PhD processing thing. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Ajit, for joining us and sharing your experience about doing a PhD in the Netherlands. I hope you all like this video and don't forget to share this video with your friends so that they get the information. Um, although he is doing a specific PhD in the Netherlands, but it will be it will give a general overview, and you can also see all the other videos, interviews that I've done with different field PhDs in the Netherlands. So also don't forget to smash the subscribe button, uh, do share this video. Uh, till next video, goodbye from Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. Peace, bye.